Hey, welcome to Coffee with Brett. I'm Brett, and this is my coffee. It's a Starbucks because honestly, I didn't have the energy to make a coffee after I went for a run this morning. And after that, I kind of felt like I deserved it. So, hey, if you're wondering, this is just a Starbucks red eye with a little bit of almond milk and two pumps of vanilla because I need a little sweetness in there. So cheers to that. So while I was on that run this morning, I was thinking about a little creative side project that I've been wanting to start. So if you're anything like me, like you get an idea about a project and then you get 40 more ideas that kind of come out at the same time and you end up confused about where to start or even if you can start. So right away, I'm kind of chugging along and I think, well, obviously you don't know where to start and you need a plan. You've got to practice what you preach, Brett. So honestly, I do have to say, like, I think I am incapable of not planning, which is why I thought of that. And I say it all the time, right? Plans are not optional. And I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but I do listen to my own advice, and I hope you do too. But I'm not even at the planning phase yet for this project, like not even close. I, first, I need, I need to figure out what the scope of this new little project is gonna be and what the effort might be. So I'm using this tried and true traditional PM tool called the Work Breakdown Structure. Now, according to Project Management Institute, a Work Breakdown Structure is a higher level project artifact that supports the creation of schedules and budgets. The work breakdown structure is a hierarchical decomposition of the total scope of work to be carried out by the project team to accomplish the project objectives and recreate the required deliverables. Wow, I almost didn't get through that one. I love delivering those formal definitions. They make me feel so prestigious, but also they can be a little confusing. I mean, let's be honest hierarchical decomposition, too formal for me. So in human speak, a work breakdown structure is an accounting of all the tasks that you need to complete in order to successfully deliver your project. And the bonus when you create one is that it can help you to develop an overall project estimate and even a plan. And that's a double bonus, right? And a total time saver. Plus they're really easy to create and they can be done visually or even in a list format. It's totally your world when you're creating a work breakdown structure. And really with a lot of project management, you have to do what makes you comfortable and was gonna lead you to success. So on screen here is an example of a traditional work breakdown structure. As you can tell, it's for a post COVID block party. Am I being too hopeful? I think not, we're gonna get through this. Okay, so aside from wanting to steal this amazing idea for a block party, you may be wondering why I'm not sharing a professional project here. Well, let's be honest, events are organized by professionals. I'm a professional, but also project management is a part of our daily lives. And honestly, everything is a project. Just think about all the projects that you've taken on in your life. Everything from planning dinners, planning vacations, taking on home renovation projects. The list is really never ending. And you can use the fundamentals of what you learn in project management and apply it to your own life. In fact, that's why I wrote Project Management for Humans. I think we're all PMs in some way, and just some of us are more formal at it than others. All right, so back to the example. This work breakdown structure shows the project broken into four groups of tasks, guests, location, food, and decorations. Within each group, there are tasks and subtasks to explain all of the work that needs to be done. Along with that are the estimates for the time it might take to complete them. And that's where the deeper thinking comes in on your part. You know, you really do have to understand the task and think through how it will be executed, how it, who will execute it, and what it's even gonna look like. But remember, estimates are always guesses. So get comfortable with guessing and putting your best estimate out there. What it comes down to is you have to break down every larger task into subtasks so that you can truly understand the level of effort. So I wanna give a practical example of how one task might turn into many tasks. So let's say I'm writing an article. It's something that I do often, and it's a big task that you might just think, oh, I'm just gonna sit down and write and it's done. 
That's not, that's not true. And that's something you have to think through with a work breakdown structure. So this is how I would break that down into smaller tasks. Within an article, my subtasks might be outlining, drafting content or writing, thinking about or requesting or even creating images to go along with what I've written, editing the content, delivering it for review, gathering feedback from those reviewers, then going through an editing and revision process, proofreading, formatting, and then eventually publishing. It's a lot of work, right? It's a lot more than you might have expected. But the idea here is to list every imaginable task to provide an estimate on what it might take to complete each on its own. From there, you can add up all of the values for your estimates and get a sense for the overall time needed for the project. So I wanna say, if this looks or feels complicated to you, it's okay. Adapt it to your own style. I actually happen to like lists. So if I'm at my desk and I need to pull together a quick estimate or a work breakdown structure, I'll just jot down a list with some quick estimates. I also wanna mention here, that your work breakdown structure for a similar event or project, like let's say you do that COVID post COVID party, it might not be the same as mine. And that's okay too. You know why? Because we all work differently. And that's why listing out the steps and sub steps or tasks and subtasks can be really helpful to talk about the things that are unique to your team, to your project, to you. You know, those things could be process, timing, and of course, the way that you do the work. It's all gonna impact your estimates. Side note here, when you are estimating projects, you can use any time value you'd like. Personally, I tend to use hours on work-related projects and days for home projects. To me, estimating hours is a little more difficult, but it will absolutely get you a more accurate and specific estimate that you can benchmark, especially if you're tracking your tasks in a time tracking system and you wanna look back and see how you did with your estimate. But again, you have to do what works for you. You might not care about hours in a day. You know, it's your world. Again, do this the way that works for you. And at the end of the day, you know, getting into the detail makes it easier to translate things that might seem big and unmanageable into small, manageable, and estimable tasks. So when you think about it that way, it makes estimating a project and plotting out its path a whole lot easier. And it's pretty easy to do. So get some practice. Tell me, what's your dream side project? Think through the tasks and subtasks and create your own work breakdown structure, maybe while you enjoy your own hot beverage or another beverage. Feel free to share your work breakdown structure in the comments below or send them directly to me at brett at teamgant.com. Also, if you're enjoying Coffee with Brett and you'd like to, uh, to see more, why don't you like and subscribe? Or better yet, share your questions or topic ideas for the show with me. I'm just getting started here and I want to make it as useful as possible to you. Thanks. <laughs>